Okay, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight. I am cruising along in Chanute, Kansas. Went a little bit out of my way. Today is my today is my half waypoint of my epic trip from Seattle to Florida in a U-Haul hauling a Spad 7 project. In half a mile, turn left onto East Elm Street. Anyway, Chanute uh, is home of the Martin and Osa Johnson Museum. I've got the uh, reproduction S38, S39s and their paint jobs. Well, the S39 is an original airplane, but anyway, and part of my S38 is as well. But uh, I went a little bit out of my way to uh, swing by and see this museum because uh, they've had a fascination with my airplanes and I've got a fascination with what they've got. Okay, this looks like it's downtown Chanute here. This town of about 9,000 people. Chanute, I think, might have a connection with Octave Chanute. I'm going to have to ask the gentleman who's going to be showing me around, Conrad Frolish, who runs the place. And he actually came down uh, to Fantasy of Flight one time, and one of his uh, workers also did that works there. Turn left onto East Elm Street. Then the destination is on your right. That looks like the Martin and Osa. Man, that is pretty freaking nice. That is pretty nice. Oh, this is Public Library. Oh, and Safari Museum. Right. And they're actually... And Osa Johnson Safari Museum arrived. They're actually not open today, but Conrad has come out generously to show me around. And I thought that's a pretty cool deal. So, let's go see the Martin and Osa Johnson Safari Museum. Check it out. What a cool building. Hey, Conrad. Good morning, Kermit. Hey, I understand you're not open today. That's, that's all right. Oh, my God. It's Thank you so much for, uh, for uh, coming out, and especially early in the morning. Oh, you betcha. I was up, up early anyways. Well, well good. So, so, yeah, so I'm, you know, doing a little bit of video here for my fans, and hopefully I can generate some interest uh, for people to come by, and so tell me all about it. What's the history? What's happening? Right. Well, you're, Chinook, Kansas is yep. named after, of course, Octave Chinook. I thought there was a yes. connection. And so, so, did he live here, born here? Or? And when the museum was founded, or no, I'm sorry, when the city was founded in 1873, he was working as a civil engineer and hmm. building bridges and doing railroads. Hmm. And he was running the railroad through southeast Kansas, and he convinced four small neighboring communities to join together as one. They were each fighting for the railroad to go through, go through their town. Mm -hmm. And so they joined together as one city and then named after Octave Chanute. And of course, then he went on to yeah, his yeah, aviation yeah. experiences. Up in uh, Michigan, Michigan, off the yeah. lake there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, this is cool. And the building we are in right now, this is the, the Santa Fe Train Depot. And what did you say, the Santa Fe? Santa, Santa Fe, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh -huh. and this was one of those Santa Fe's that had a Harvey restaurant in it. A restaurant in it. Fred Harvey and that whole story with the Harvey girls. Yeah, uh, I'm not familiar yeah, with Judy, that. There, there's all, that old Judy Garland movie that I always oh, think of, the Harvey yeah. girls. And, and essentially it was America's first chain of restaurants. And Fred Harvey no had this way. idea to set up these restaurants oh, along, that's pretty the, cool. along the path of the railroad and the different Santa Fe oh, cool. depots. And hmm. so, yeah. And so how long has the museum actually been here? The museum was established in 1961. Osa's mother actually outlived both the Johnsons, Martin and Osa, mm -hmm. and since they had no children, uh, Belle Lee, that was Osa's mom, became the heir of their things, their, their, their photographs, manuscripts, films, personal possessions, and that was what was used to create the core of the museum when hmm. it first opened up in 1961. Super. So, tell me what the deal is yeah, here. Yeah, All the artifacts. Walk, right. Let's walk, in, walk into the museum side. Are the, are the giraffes here actually... Uh, I got an airplane painted like that. <laughs> I think my wife's got some shoes like that, too. Um, yeah, th those were uh, gifts, uh, more recent donations from, okay. from Johnson, from fans of the museum, and, and they just wanted to contribute something fun to the museum. So a little gift shop here. Yeah, yeah, yeah a gift, gift shop, gift store. Of course, we sell copies of the Johnson's books and their movies on DVD. The I've got a popular of the books is I Married Adventure. Ocean's yeah. Autobiography it was the number one best-selling nonfiction in 1940. I've got an original copy. Yeah, just 
This is a wonderful book, and this is the, the uh, new edition that just came out earlier this year. Kadansha put it out, and uh, we're cool. just honored that they went back to the zebra stripes, and it'll be out in e-book version later this cool. year. So, so we had to rescan the photographs in high resolution so they could use those in, in e-book. And, and it's a th- it's a great book. In fact, mm-hmm. I think I've read all of them. Mm-hmm. But that that's a good one. That's from uh, Osa Johnson's thing, and I think uh, Wings Over Africa is another great one if you want to read about you know the airplane connection. Yeah, that was Martin's book. Yeah, specifically about the flying safari, nineteen thirty three, thirty four. Yes. I'm gonna have to hit the gift shop on the way out. I need another one of these for my hot tub <laughs> <laughs> and grab uh, some of the. Yeah, and then a, a bit of, yeah, I Married Adventure. That was a, a movie done in 1940 by Columbia, based on the book. And then Babuna covers their flying safari. Ah, uh, yeah, I've got Babuna, and I've got. I don't think I got this one, but I tell you what, before I leave, I'm going to grab them all. Oh my God! So, do some of these things sell like the big posters and stuff? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah, these throws. Afghans, you know, we've, we've got pillows and totes, and yeah, you betcha. Not exactly a Sikorsky, but... <laughs> yeah, no, but we've got, uh, oh yeah, of course, there's the paper cutout versions. Oh, that's and cool. I'll have the, oh man, I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm going to go out with a big load here. Yeah, we've had the model kits, the Czech Republic model kits. That's like the classic shot of the Johnsons right there. Yeah, we still have the, oh, the awesome. S39s. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, my S38 is not flying yet, so he's working on it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm gonna have to. I gotta have to grab some of these for my airplanes too. Oh my God, I'm going out. I sure am glad I've got an, a most empty truck because when I leave, I'm uh, Andrew White. That was that's one of his paintings. That's awesome. So, to your knowledge, what exactly happened with the original S-38 and S-39? Yeah, the S-39 during World War II was used by the Civil Air Patrol uh, out of Texas, uh, Beaumont, Texas. And they were involved in a rescue operation in the Gulf of Mexico, landed it uh, for another another, uh, um, Civil Air Patrol plane had gone down. They landed it and then when they were finished they couldn't restart the engines. It was being towed by a Coast Guard vessel back huh. to, to Texas, back to Beaumont, and it sank under tow. Oh, okay. And we've been in contact with a uh, Coast Guard officer who believes he knows where it's located. Huh. Of course, yeah. it's an assault. It's going to yes, be worthless. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but still, it, to have some pieces for you guys yeah. would be great. Yeah, somebody wants to dive on it and, huh. and find it. Tom has talked about, uh, Tom Schrade has yeah. talked about wanting to dive on it, as has uh, Clive Cussler. Hmm. Of course, the author of the um, Dirk Pitt novels, and hmm. yeah, so it's 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 there. Uh, just just need to hmm. find a team and some money to cool. to go look for it. And the S thirty eight, yeah, there's a couple conflicting uh, reports. Yeah, one one that was in, in Cuba, and, and for the S thirty eight, so yeah, the S thirty nine. Sorry, yeah, S thirty nine in the Gulf of Mexico. The S thirty eight, the twin engine. Uh, it's either in Cuba or or it was in Canada. Hmm. Damage destroyed one or the other. Interesting. Uh, we just need to do a bit more research about that. Well, anyway, more than likely, it's probably not sitting in a barn in like restorable shape. So anyway, yeah. so I feel pretty lucky to have the only two that are currently flying. Well, let's head upstairs. That's where the yeah. Johnson story is, is told. Uh, of course, we, we also have related collections. We have a large West African uh, ethnographic uh, through a tribal collections mass related items on the first floor. Gonna get a shot here with my friends. Just saying. Yeah, that's popular. And normally, we don't have to cut out animals spread around. That it's hurts. A, this uh, Saturday was Safari Family Fun Day here at Fort Chanute, and so we had a lot of families in, and the kids and kids love seeing the animals. Oh, this must have been when. Uh, yeah, when uh, Tom Schrade. Yeah, Tom yeah, came he, by. He brought the uh, yeah S thirty eight here a couple times. Well, one of these days we'll see. One of these days I'll have to bring them both by. When we uh, maybe take them both to Oshkosh, we'll absolutely come by and make some kind of a, a deal to help you guys out, get you the bet. town out. <clears throat> oh, that's cute. Kids area there. That's great. Yeah, so we can wear safari hats and we have binoculars. Of course, we have to have yeah, Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto in their safari outfits there. So. I'm just saying, I gotta wear one too. What do you think? Huh? Is that a 
Kudu? Bush, Bush Buck, yeah. The Bush letter, Buck. lettering is getting a little, kids have been playing with huh. that. Warthog, oh my God, I was in South Africa. Those are the cutest things, those little baby ones. Mm -hmm. Now, is most of this stuff things that they brought back? The Johnsons were really collectors of things. They were more interested in the filmmaking, the photography, the writing, documenting what they saw. They brought back a few items, but uh, most of these, oh, yeah. uh, on this level, these are from West Africa. This was a collection okay. that came to the museum hmm. in, in the 1970s uh, uh, and 80s, and, in, and up to today. She was a cute gal, that's for sure. And after, uh, after they came back the last time, they did a lot of, she did a little bit of Hollywood stuff too. Yeah, yes she did. Uh, she had a, a fashion image. Uh, she did a, uh, of the world's very first wildlife documentary series. Osa Johnson's Big Game Hunt, or just the, the Big Game Hunt, came out in, I believe, 1952 is when that aired. It's a pretty dangerous... Muscaria. Mutual of Omaha and all those other... Yeah, they, know. to me, they were the original documentary adventure photographers. And, and in reality, I mean, I, to me, Somebody's got to do a full feature film one day, you know? And, I, and I'm hoping this thing we may do in Tanzania with Haley Jackson is going to plant the seed and somebody said to do a big budget film. But instead of being about, you know, it's, it's got to be about, you know, uh, a kind of a self-discovery process where I think they went down there and were going to, you know, look for the savages and kill the animals and blah, blah, blah. And they left with an appreciation for the people and the natives and then they were like some of the first people to say, hey guys, you're killing all the animals, we gotta stop this, you know? So they were some of the early, early environmentalists and yeah, I, I think it'd be a great you, story. You nailed it, yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, their perspective changed very, very dramatically. Totally ties in with Fantasy of Flight because that's exactly what Fantasy of Flight's all about. It's about self-discovery and self-transformation. And I think it would be a great film one day to... Absolutely. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, the exhibit is set up as a typical timeline, chronological story of their lives, travels, adventures, beginning with their families and childhoods. Going through the Jack London trip. So oh, yeah. Trip. Yeah, so that was uh, Martin's first deal down in... Borneo, and then uh, later he came back and was showing a film somewhere, and uh, and Osa somehow met him or something. They connected. I mean, they were married in like two weeks or something. Very quickly, yeah. Oh yeah, my they, God, they, for sure, soulmates. Indeed, yeah. Their their strengths and weaknesses balanced out each other, and they were, they were an exceptional team. Absolutely. And you know, you know why I like the story is because. It's a, it's a great kind of a yin-yang deal, and within one lies the other. Because while you've got this masculine side with Martin, he was more the creative, you know, artistic kind of guy behind the camera. And Oso was the feminine one and was very thin, but she was out there with a the gun, you know, getting all the food for everybody. So it was a fascinating uh, deal. And I'm actually working on a... Uh, an audio experience and with this whole act three thing that I'm doing for Fantasy of Flight, we're writing one right now with that basic theme for that to deliver something and people probably will sit in, you know, one or the other airplanes to listen to it. Just, but kind of in the dark, it's not with it. But eventually if we end up doing this uh, 3D IMAX film, then I've got the opportunity to take it to the next level, you know, and we'll see. It'd be uh, cool to have a 3D IMAX film with basically, you know, reliving what they did flying over Africa. And what, what they don't, what most people don't realize, they basically based out of, uh, uh, you know, Nairobi mm -hmm. here, but basically a lot of their flying was actually in, uh, you know, Tanzania. Yes. Well, that's pretty cool. So we got the S-39 up there. 
Looks like the lions have been gnawing on the yeah. tires. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, they had rubber tires on them, but they, they got so dry yeah. up. Uh, so, you know, somebody had just Keep made a little them. effort. And then there's the... Some funky looking tires there. And the S38 was... A, that, that is a static model, but very highly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nicely done. That's by, awesome. By a couple in, um, in California. It's the same couple that built the Snark model ship that's down uh -huh. the stairs on the first floor. Cool. And what people don't realize is the uh, the S thirty eight actually came out first, and then what happened was the uh, the uh, the stock market crash and stuff. There was just not a big market for it, so they said, "Hey, let's build a smaller one." So that's what, that's why the S thirty nine is actually uh, a later model. Yeah, some of these classic pictures here that they got. Too many cool things. Yeah, I've got a copy like that, the original one. Yeah, that's the one everyone loves. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Tom Schrady gave it, gave it to me with the airplane. Mm -hmm. Of course, George Eastman and Kodak fame was one of their good friends yep. and supporters, and he's in a couple pictures there and, and yep. there. It basically kind of helped sponsor them, I think. And yes. At yep. least with... Uh, oh, that's a cute shot of us. Oh man. Huh. So at that time, Tanzania was Tanganyika. Oh, I'll be darned. Yeah, so it's still Lake Tanganyika. Yeah. And that's, the, that's kind of the famous lake where you always see the tons of the flamingos flying off. And I think they, there was a, a really cool shot in, uh, out of Africa. They did some film in there with a tiger moth. Yeah. Not tiger moth, gypsy moth. Yeah. <laughs> Straight ahead is where we have our changing, one of our changing exhibit spaces. The exhibit is Food in the Field, looking at the culinary side of the Johnson's, huh. or more particular, Osa's adventures. She was a superb chef, as well as a crack shot. Wow, that's pretty cool. That almost looks like something on the front of a boat. Yeah, that was a, that's a piece from uh, New Guinea. It was from an, an earlier exhibit. God, look at that. Sense that we've got. Camels. That's a great shot. Yeah, when uh, Dick Jackson rebuilt the uh, the S thirty nine, eventually, uh, originally at the factory, they all did not have cows, but eventually somebody did a an engine upgrade, a little more horsepower, and uh, and put a cow on it, made it a C model, and that's what we've got. So I've actually I went out the other day. We were doing an annual. I said, well, let me you know take the cow off because if we do this filming in Tanzania, I want to mimic the way it was. Oh my God! There was this big trim change, and it yeah. normally normally the nose is about this far above the uh, the horizon or below the horizon, you know. So when I have people fly, I say, you know, just keep the nose right there. Mm -hmm. and when you do a turn, you know, if it starts to drop, pull the yoke back or whatever. So anyway, so I went out there, and all of a sudden I go, something doesn't feel right. Something doesn't feel right, and I'm playing around with the trim, and the nose was about like nine or ten inches below the horizon. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So we landed. We figure it's probably uh, Dick Jackson says that it actually flies faster with a cow on it, which is kind of so you'd think if it was uh, if it was less drag, you would think the the nose would be lower. Mm. Uh, so if it was more drag, it would drag back and it would pitch the nose up because it's above the center of gravity. But uh, I think what we finally figured out was because he says it's faster, I'm going to go clock it over a thing with and without the cow. Mm. On. But I think uh, what we determined was it's probably because of the wash over the stabilizers changing the trim, not because of the drag of the deal. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, how about them apples? <laughs> <laughs> oh, too cool. That's a great shot. I got to get one. I don't know if you sell that one. With oh, a yeah. Lot. I mean, yeah. Any, any Johnson images, it's, it's amazing how the technology has changed in the past, well, in our lifetimes. It's so much easier to scan photos, high resolution, and you can have a, huh. a, a you know, professional company print them up in any size and finish. Backing. Karsten, so who, the uh, uh, what was the name of the uh, Sergeyevsky? Boris Sergeyevsky yeah, was yeah. the was the one that basically the Sikorsky factory pilot that mm -hmm. flew the S thirty eight, 
And then Vern Carstens? Ver, Vern Carstens. Carstens. Yeah, Vern Carstens was there. He was actually the pilot of the, at the local airport here in Chinook when they first met him. Uh, and, and so he, he ended up being hired as their pilot hmm. to go with them on the, on the uh -huh. flying safari and trip. That, he, but he mainly flew the S-39? be honest with you, I think he flew both. The, oh yeah, well I'm sure he did, yeah. but I think on the trip up from uh, Cape Town, it was Sergeyevsky yeah. that flew. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because he, he wrote a book, uh, I, Wine, Women, and yes. Song, or yes. something like that. Correct. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, but Vern went on to become a very highly respected test pilot for Beach. Huh. Eventually retired here back in Chanute. Oh, awesome. But yeah, that was a homemade windsock. Somewhere we have a photograph of that in, on one of the fields because, because of course, at that time in the early 30s, there were not a lot of developed airfields in, in, in East Africa, and, and Johnson's would have a team go out ahead of them and, and low out an area of, of land. I'm just saying, I think that's naked in Jamaica rum right there, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm going to leave you a, a oh, bottle. Oh, I brought oh, some. Oh, wow. I, I, I unfortunately. I, I actually I nipped into it a little bit last night when I <laughs> when I made my last stop. But I will please remind me, and I'll give you what I've got. It's almost full. Oh, that's a great shot. Uh, Martin and Osa Johnson they learned to fly before they went down there, but obviously weren't qualified for the cross country and all that stuff. So they hired people. Of course, they were preoccupied with doing filming and. You know things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. well, that's pretty cool. I like the background music. Oh my gosh, that had to have been the most amazing adventure back during those times. And then they came back, and you know, they got to share it with people after they did the the film, and they would come back and tour the country, you know, showing their films and giving lectures and. This is awesome. So they came back, and I can't remember what year it was, but eventually uh, they were both flying to LA and you know, Boeing 247, the airplane hit the mountain or crashed or something, Martin died, Osa got out. What year was that? That's 1937, January. Huh. Yeah, yeah it's like one of the ironic stories of the adventure that goes through all these dangers and travels and you know, dies in the United States. Hmm. Yeah. Commercial flight, but she did most of her writing actually after Martin's death. I Married Adventure, Four Years in Paradise, Bride and the huh. Solomons, a number of children's books. Uh, did lecture films, hmm. the African Paradise, Tulagi and the Solomons. Hmm. So yeah, she kept very busy after after his death. But they were such a team. I mean, she married yeah. at sixteen, and they were together pretty much twenty four seven. And you lose half that team. It, it, you know, it just had yeah. To I, I, I imagine that the writing was probably a lot of rekindling memories and, and honoring, you know, everything. So really, really sad deal. Um, and then and then, what, what year did she pass away? 1953. Oh, no way, it was the year I was born. Yeah. Unreal. And, and was she still in LA, Hollywood area? Or? She was essentially maintained an apartment in, in different locations in New York City. In her oh, okay. later life, yeah, that's hmm. when she, that was kind of huh. permanent. Location. Oh my God! Well, uh, uh, I just I I, I, I want to thank you for showing me around, and uh, if I can, I'd like to go like raid the gift shop. Okay, you got it. Thank you so thank much, you, Kermit. Kermit. I appreciate Fantastic. it. Cool, Kermit. Out for now. This is really cool. Y'all got to come by. Okay.